Halloween Queen here and today I'm going to be making a Scream 6 rope and mask as you can see. This one from Flagship is absolutely torn to shreds. It got stepped on, ripped. It smells really bad. It's, yeah, it's, um, it's one of the costumes you buy from Fun World, so it's mediocre. So we're going to upgrade it today because I think I need an upgrade. And so let's go ahead and upgrade it. Now the first thing I start off with is this robe I got from Amazon for, I believe, $20, if I remember correctly. Now this I got a small, I am 5'7", so if you are my height you're going to want to get a small. And the hood is actually really big and nice, and you'll see at the end that the hood is really nice. So we're going to sew that together, but right now I'm just trying it on, seeing how it fits. I'm going to iron it out, and yeah. So here I have the robe out ready for spray paint to get the glitter and here's after. You can see it's not too clear on the camera but you can see I misted the spray paint on by barely holding down the spray paint nozzle and it worked perfectly. It looks perfect, it looks movie accurate, it looks really good. I'm really happy with how it turned out. So now let's go ahead and move on. Now the next step is to add a wire in the hood because I want this to have that classic shape that Ghostface has if you know what I'm saying. Um, so I'm cutting a hole in the little seam that's in the hood and I'm going to run the wire up the hood and then out from the end. So so I needed to find a, um, what are those called? A safety pin but I didn't have a safety pin at that time so I had to just keep on trying to find my way to loop it through but yeah Now I'm working on the sleeve and here I'm going to take elastic and run it through the small hole in um the sleeve you can see here i got the elastic it's a little too big so i will have to cut it in half but i'm going to run it through the sleeve and scrunch it and that's how i'm going to make the sleeve as you can see i'm cutting a small hole here and then i run it through make sure to have a safety pin i forgot to grab a safety pin so uh, i figure out how to get a safety pin after this but yeah Alrighty, this is what the robe looks like after all the sleeves are scrunched. I really like the way that it holds onto the gloves. Looks really nice. And now we are ready to move on to the next step, which is sewing the robe together. camera but I got my sewing machine here and I got the velcro. We're gonna sew on the velcro onto the robe and um, I already sewed on the first velcro and it sewed pretty well so I'm gonna show that. Now I am brand new to this machine so do not judge my stitches but it works. See right here? I sewed on the first two velcros so now it just velcros up and it hides the velcro on the side. So this part will be on top and then we'll add the second one and the third one and that should keep the robe secured. So we ended up scrapping the three velcro and only left one velcro and the rest is just sewn in so it will have the chest open if I need to get it off and the rest is just going to be sewed on. So now what I'm doing is cutting out the streamers. Sorry for the footage being blurry. I don't know why it's blurry, but I'm cutting out the streamers for the robe. And of course, there's three on each side, adding up to six. I cut 
two long ones and one short, medium, larger one. And these are gonna be the streamers for the rope. Now after I double sewed those and ironed them flat, I am now cutting out the triangles in my robe and I'm just doing this all along the bottom just so it looks more accurate. After a little bit of the sewing machine, got these guys sewed on. First sleeve and then second sleeve. The process or the progress we have. We have the hood, which has a wire in it, and the streamers, which look really nice. This one's a little bit close on the side, but I feel like I can, I can fix that by taking the sewing machine and sewing it more on that side. But it overall looks really good. I'm happy with the sparkle. It's not too much. At least you, it doesn't look too much, and I'm happy with the Velcro. It doesn't look like it's a seam. Alrighty, now it is time for the second part and my favorite part. We're going to be customizing the ghost face mask. As you can see, I have a ghost face fun world ultra white mask. And I believe this is, um, I believe this is the Scream 5 one, but I'm detagging it here. Close your eyes if you don't like to see that, but don't worry. I keep all my tags. I will show you in a second that I do keep them all just in case I do want to resell them. And right here, I do have them all for my mask. The only one I have not detagged is my 25th anniversary, which I do not plan on wearing that one or ever doing anything with that one. So let's get back to the process. So you're going to need a latex glove. And then I got this. Um, this is from Panios. It's a really cheap you can get them at the dollar store and we're gonna double mesh the eyes this is so you don't have that ugly see-through eye mesh i don't know why their mesh on the screen mask are so transparent but this just makes it a hundred times better whenever you can't see someone's eyes so we're gonna hot glue those in and then we'll move on to the next step my mask is now all double meshed so now we are ready to move on to the next step but first i'm going to check it out you can see here it's got some blue spots on it it's got some dirt marks on it i don't know why this one's so dirty compared to my other ultra white i had but anyway we're going to move on to our first step which is e6000 glue and you're going to get the black e6000 because this is going to make it easier on yourself in the garden uh wear a mask while you're doing this please do um, don't want to get those fumes in your lungs. Trust me, the mask helps. So what I'm doing is I'm applying the E6000 all around the mask and then taking my glove and patting it with a toothbrush and my glove to give it texture. And you're just going to do this all around the mask.
Alrighty, I set that side to dry, and now it is all dry, and you can see here I'm showing the texture it leaves behind, which is really cool. And so let's go ahead and move on to our next step. So our next step is we need to make this mask have a base coat of a dark color like gray or black. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our gray paint and black paint, and we're going to mix those together. If I show here, here's my gray paint. I use dark gray from Apple Barrel. You don't need any fancy paint. I just put it into this cup, which the paint is dry in there. So just put it in the cup and then you're going to also want to water it down. Not too much, but um, water it down enough that it spreads and glides around the mask really well. also doing is adding some black under the eyes and this is gonna make it so it pops out more whenever um, we add our white coat on top and just a little um, heads up I went to spirit and I actually found one of the aged Billy masks so it's pretty cool I like the style but anyways we gotta move on to the rest of our project here we're gonna be taking some white paint it's just the basic white paint I'm believe I'm using the glossy white paint and what we're going to do is you need a chip brush on the similar to what I have on the right there the big one and you're just going to lightly tap around the mask and lightly tap <laughs> Alrighty, after we did that, we're going to grab some tan paint and some water, and we're going to water it down. I added a little bit more in the cup. There we go. So now you're going to grab a tissue, and you're going to just basically water down where you painted, and then take your tissue and dab. You don't want to wipe it, just dab. And you're going to do this all around the mask, and that's going to give it its looks like it's been out in the sun, it's been decayed, and it's going to give it that yellow tint. Right here I am adding um, I'm adding black under the eyes and that's going to simulate the grime, the dirt that's built up over the years in this mask. And so I just wanted to add that little hint in. I also added, um, I also took brown paint and dry brushed it on the top parts of the eyes and the under parts of the eyes. Now next up we gotta add that classic scar that Stu's mask has and also the cracks so but he also has some molding so I'm using this green gloss paint um, I think it's called spring green yeah spring green so we're gonna be using that for the mold and then I'm using a sharpie fine point pen for the scars and you can see here I'm just quickly drawing on the scars well it wasn't this fast in real life and then I took some of that tan paint and watered it down and dyed out the scars a little bit just so they're not as pop out and then I added the green paint. Now I did add red red dye at the um, bottom part of the eyes just to make it so it pops out a little more and then I sealed it with a clear spray paint. Now everything is all finished, so let's show the final product. Now 
I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who supported me throughout this journey, because if you didn't know, this video is actually a special video of my 400 subscribers special, so I'm very happy to have you guys on my side. It keeps me motivated to keep posting, and I figured why not just put the mask and the robe in the same video, and this will be like a little special treat for you guys. So I hope you enjoy this little montage of me in my custom Scream 6 mask and robe. Alrighty everyone, that is about it for today's video. Thank you all once again, as I said in the voiceover, this is my 400 sub special. So, I decided to do something big for all of you, and links to where I got everything is down in the description below, where I got the knife, mask, shoes, everything, because the shoes are actually pretty accurate to ghost face shoes, so, got them from Walmart, but, yeah, I'm really happy with how the mask turned out, it looks it's really good on camera and it looks really good in person too i it's hard to get both to look good but i'm really happy with how it turned out and this was one of my first times ever doing a decrepit scream mask i did do one with the basic ultra white hard mask and it turned out pretty good it was billy's of course this one's Stu's. so i might sell that one in the future i'm not sure yet but then again i am very happy how the robe turned out i'm happy with everything that was done and once again i could not have done this without you guys so thank you so much if you want some more amazing ghost based content or just overall spirit halloween content go follow my instagram i post almost daily on there and you'll definitely get updates on what video i'm working on on there and i will see you guys later bye